Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Rexford here, and welcome back to another gimmick tutorial, and today we're going to be learning about some paths. Very exciting, very fun to kind of delve into, so without further ado, let's go ahead and just get right into it. Alright, so the first thing you want to go and do for this tutorial is, um, actually for, you know, if you're using paths in general, what you want to have is a sprite along with an object. And as you guys can see, I already have both those made out here. Now, this is just a little 16 by 16 dot, nothing too special. And the object for it is just a simple object, nothing in it, and uh, the sprite is just that little dot. So, what we're going to go and do is we're going to kind of go away from these for now. And we're going to go ahead up here to our little uh, little menu here and click on where it says create path. It's a little red squiggly line kind of thing with the arrow at that end. Alright, so we're going to go and click that once, kind of enlarge that there. Now, what we're going to go and do is, by default, when you create a new path, it's going to be named Path0, and that's fine. We don't really need to change that for any purposes. So what we're going to do is, going to go and take out this grid for one, <laughs> and uh, basically, this little dot right here, this little starting point, is going to be your initial area in where your... Um, uh, your path starts at. So this is basically the beginning of your path. You can click on this to kind of move it around and uh, fun stuff like that. Now before we delve into this, I'm going to go and do one thing that I want to make sure you guys definitely get. I'm going to go and create a room, right? And I'm going to go ahead and take out the grid for now because we don't really need it. Then I'm going to change up the color just because I don't feel, or because I feel that it's kind of a dull color and I want something a little bit more exciting. Alright, there we go. We've got a cool little green going on there. Alright, so we're going to head back into our path, and what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to where it says indicate the room to show us background. We're going to click that once and choose our newly created room. Alright, and you'll see now that we have a brand new room that we've created, and uh, we have a nice green background there. And uh, basically, how paths work are we have a little dot here, right? This is our starting point, as I explained earlier. And we're eventually going to create a path that our little object here is going to follow around. Okay, and what we can do is, let's say we had a whole bunch of stuff in this room here that we kind of wanted to make sure the path didn't either hit or collide with or, you know, whatever. Basically, this thing over here that says the indicate uh, room in which you want to, whatever, uh, set the path in would help us a lot there because we'd be able to kind of weave ourselves around all the objects and stuff in our room. So, that's just something I wanted to point out there. Not super important, but something that, you know, I think you guys should be aware of. All right, so one thing else... Uh, um, or one thing, um, I guess, I want to show you guys one thing else, that doesn't make any sense, um, that I want to show you guys is the little grid here. Basically, um, this little starting point, and as for the whole path itself, is going to follow along this grid. And you can obviously change this up by going up to where it says 16 by 16 and going like whatever you want, 32 by 32 or 64 by 32 or whatever the heck you want, and this little dot here will follow along those grid lines. But I'm going to go ahead and just keep it 16 by 16 for now. Alright, so now into the actual path creation process. What we want to go and do to actually create another point in our path is just go add point, or add I suppose, and just click and drag from our starting point, and there we go. We now have this brand new little dot here that has appeared next to our starting point, and this is going to be a part of our path. So, with just these two lines here, we can have it however it is right now. I mean, we could just go ahead and exit this, and everything would be fine, it would work okay, but I'm going to do something a little bit more complex, I suppose. I'm going to go and add two more points, just kind of move that there. There we go, and kind of move these into, oops, accidentally created a point that I didn't want there. So what I'm going to go and do to delete this point is click on it and go over here to delete, and there we go. I'm now back to my initial four points that I've created and that I wanted, and I'm going to go and kind of move these into a certain formation that I want. Kind of to a little, a little square formation. Alright, now this is looking pretty good, but the only thing is, I don't want these in a square. I want them to be in a circle. So, what I'm going to go and do is, instead of straight lines, I'm going to go down here to where it says smooth curve, and just click that once. And there we go. We now have a circular path. <clears throat> excuse me, to work with. Now, there's a couple things we can do here. We can change up the precision uh, to say something like 5 or whatever. This is for some very medium, uh, or medium, minimum changes. Um, they won't be too noticeable, but they're if you really want to get really in-depth with your paths. Now, I showed you guys how to delete paths and stuff, and pretty much everything that involves path creation is pretty much already been shown. So, one thing I just want to go ahead and get into before we actually get into applying this path to our object is this little close checkbox here. Now if we go ahead and hit our uncheck closed, 
you'll notice that our path automatically becomes kind of this ramp formation and we can kind of use it however we like. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and recheck that again because that's not what I want but in some instances if you do want that you'll know how to kind of unclose that and close your paths. Now let's go ahead and OK our path now that we finish our creating our path it all looks fine. Let's go ahead and hit this little green check mark here. Now let's double click on our object and to apply our path to our object what we're going to go and do is go add event, create and keeping in our move tab we want to click and drag over under this path sub layer we want to click and drag over this set path. Now the only reason I'm using D and D for now is because it is really simplistic and coding in paths isn't the most time consuming or the uh, most time uh, friendly kind of thing and tutorial friendly kind of thing so for now I'm just going to use D&D and you guys can of course switch this over to GML uh, later on if you feel necessary um, but I'm going to go ahead and kind of keep it on the D&D side for now so what we're going to go ahead and do is where it says path we're going to click that once and hit path 0 which is our path we've created before and the speed I'm going to go ahead and hit 1 and that's just like our object speed for uh, each speed and um, uh, X speed or whatever um, <clears throat> excuse me I mean H speed and V feed or V speed Ah, excuse me. <laughs> it pretty much works the same as the set speed actions over here. So I'm just going to go set to one for now and at end. Now there's a couple options we can choose here. At end we have stop, continue from start, continue from here, or reverse. Now stop is pretty self-explanatory. It just stops once it's at the end of the loop or continue from start. Uh, is basically once it's at the end it just continues from the starting area and kind of loops and loops and loops and uh, continue from here is basically wherever it stopped at the end wherever your path ends it's just going to continue on from there and loop and loop and loop and reverse pretty self-explanatory just kind of reverses so <laughs> not really much to explain that I'm just going to go ahead and keep it um, continue from start for now or actually <clears throat> I guess change it from stop to continue from start all right, so relative and absolute. Relative basically means that once it's um, created your little loop there, it's going, or I guess your path, it's going to be created wherever your object is put in the room. And absolute basically means it's going to continue from, or rather start from wherever you created it in your room. So remember when you created that path on the side of the room? If we had an absolute, our path would basically create from the side of the room. And even if we place the object somewhere over here or whatever. Now, I'm going to go ahead and change it back to relative so that wherever we put our object, that's where our uh, little path is going to start. All right, so we're just going to go and hit OK. And in our room, we're going to go to our objects and just choose our object that we've created and put the path in and put it anywhere you like. Now I'm going to go and run the room really quick and run the game really quick and kind of switch the window so you guys can get a better look at this and uh, just tell you guys a little bit more information or I guess show you guys. There's really not any more to tell on these paths and uh, yeah. <laughs> so with that said, I'll see you guys back here in just a minute. All right, and we are back, and the path has already started just a little bit, so I'm a little off in uh, the exact starting point of the uh, the loop itself or the path. But yeah, guys, we have a working path, and just a little goes in a little circular motion there. Very nice, very smooth, and uh, very cool overall. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I know it was a bit long. I wanted to kind of uh, compress it into a shorter kind of version, but I guess seven or so minutes isn't too bad. So uh, I guess this is it, guys. Feel free to comment, rate. Subscribe on this video and to my channel, I suppose. And uh, until next video, guys, this has been Rex Furry. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I think I already said that, though. And uh, if you have any comments or questions, actually, I already said that, too. Kind of. I don't know. This is, I just kind of felt this was a weird, kind of really quick end to the video. But, oh, well, I guess what can you do? This is a tutorial. We can't really expect too much. So, <laughs> until next video, guys, this has been Rex Furry. Have fun with your paths, and I will see you all next video.